What's up family? How you guys doing today? I'm Adelie here and this is a continuation of our last video. Let's install TrueNAS. Hey guys, before we continue, giveaway time. I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a monthly giveaway. And January's giveaway is this 12 inch WiMAX low power display that you can just plug in almost anywhere it's touch screen you can connect it via one cable and power it everything so you click via type c you get power display audio and touch screen this is an awesome device and in order to enter this giveaway there's a few things i want you guys to do first thing i need you guys to like and comment on this video and then subscribe to my youtube channel then go over to instagram follow me at milky tech then comment like and tag four friends then go over to my TikTok. Follow me at the Milky Tech. Like, comment, and tag four friends, and that will enter you into our giveaway. The deadline for this giveaway is January 31st, and then I'll announce the winners shortly after. May the odds be in your favor. Let's get this done. All right, so in order to set up TrueNAS, you first gotta download TrueNAS. So well, you can Google it or just go to the link that's in the description. Click on it, go to software, and uh, we're using TrueNAS scale. Click on that, and then you download TrueNAS. I've already downloaded it, so I'm not gonna do it a second time. Next, you wanna download Rufus. Rufus, link will be in the description as well. This way you can make a bootable USB drive. Scroll down and download the latest one. I already done that. And then, after you download it, you just run Rufus. Plug in the USB that you're gonna use. I'm using a 16 gig USB stick from Micro Center. And as you can see, it automatically detected it. I click select, and you wanna select the TrueNAS ISO. And now, it's already set it up to the right settings and you just hit start and it'll create your bootable disk and now after this you just plug it into your computer turn it on and boot from the usb drive now that we install TrueNAS on our server we're going to use the ip address that the pc gave us so in my case it is 192.168.1.253 hit enter and as you can see we are logged into our nas so now our username is root right, so now we'll put in the password that we put in on our installation so I guess my username is admin, and here is the interface for TrueNAS. You know, you get pretty nice information, gives you the memory, the CPU you're using, you have six cores. All right, this is awesome. Our gigabit ethernet. So our first step is to set up the gateway and the NAS. So we'll go to network. All right, so now we're gonna set up our global config. Now we go down to default gateway, and we wanna change the IPv4 default gateway setting. This IP address is the IP address for your router, and that's what you wanna put in here. It's already auto-populated for me, which is great. and has already the DNS server for the router. This I'm going to change. I'm going to use 1.1.1.1. I like using Cloudflare's DNS. It's secure and it's super fast. Actually, the fastest DNS you can use. So if you want to boost your internet speed, just use that. All right. And hit save. And I want to give our NAS a static IP, not a dynamic IP. And this way, we could always find it. If we just let the router do whatever it wants and select the IP address every time it reboots, we'll have to refine the NAS every single time. And that's just too much work. So let's set up a static IP. Now there's two different ways to do it. You can do it either via the router, via the DHCP, or you can set it up on the true NAS. I'm going to show you guys both ways, but for me personally, setting the static IP address on the server itself is the way to go. This way, if you ever were to change routers or change places or anything, you don't have to find the NAS every single time. Tag IP is the way to go in this case. All right, so now let's log into our router. Um, usually this is the IP address in the back of the router. So just go find that and put it in. Let's log in. Yes, I am using the stock AT&T router. It is Wi-Fi 6 and I am going to upgrade my routers. That's the only reason why I kept it because it is Wi-Fi 6 and it met my needs. But right now it's just, we need a little more. We're going to go to subnet and DHCP. In this case, you're going to need a device code, which is also in the back of your router, if you're using the stock ISP routers. Oh, it's such a weird number. So in this case, you're going to look down and find the IP address for the NAS, right over here. And now we just want to say allocate. And as you can see over here, allocation is on. So now, every time the PC connects to the router, it won't give it another IP address. It will keep that IP address for it. All right, so that's how you do it, the DHCP method. All right, so let's set up a static router via the TrueNAS software. In the same place as the global configuration, you'll go to networks and a static routes. Just hit add, click on under interface, click that, and unselect DHCP. So over here, so you want to select an IP address that's outside the range of, of your router, of your DHCP server, and 
you get that information right here from the subnet DHCP information. It tells you what IP address it starts and it ends. So you want to select outside of it. And I'm going to use 192.168.1.46. And yeah, this is 24. And hit save. And let's hit test changes. Confirm and test changes. And now let's just log into it. 46. And we just log in. And there you go. And now you have a static IP address. And now as I set up, we have to give ourselves uh, permission, credentials. So let's go to credentials and let's do local groups. So we'll add a group. And let's make it a home group. And let's select Samba Authentication and hit Now that we have that set, let's create a user. Well, it's going to be military tech. Let's add in a strong password. So we're not creating a new power group since we already made one. So we're going to select that one. Let's go find it. It's the last one, home. And we hit save now. And now let's create our storage pools. Now that we have all our credentials and settings set up. So to storage and create pool. I'm gonna name it share since it's my share drive. And we're gonna select all, all three drives, move them over. So we're gonna select RAID Z as our option. This way we get redundancy and we don't lose a lot of storage space, which is great. And recreate, firm. It will wipe all the drives, which is fine, and create pool. And now we wait. And now let's add a data set. Now I give it a name. I'm going to name it Milky Tech. The share type, I'm going to go SMB. And I'll hit save. All right, now let's set up a share. Let's click on shares. And we are going to do a Windows SMB share. Because we are, most of the PCs are using are Windows based. So let's select our path. Boom, boom, boom. Let's enable it, enable device. All right, so let's view all. Over here, we're gonna click on the three dots and we're gonna edit file path. So we wanna add a group, we wanna search groups, our home group, and save access. Now it's updating. And there we go. Now let's go to File Explorer on your PC and let's add the server so that we can start dumping our files in. Click on the three dots over here and let's, let's map a network drive. Now select the drive and We'll add the IP address, 192.168.1.46, and we're gonna add the share drive. We connect the login, and now we wanna use our login, remember, and okay. All right, then now. And finally, success. We have added the network drive. Now, I've had some issues trying to get to this point here, as you can see in the previous, uh, Two errors I got with one, it couldn't connect to the drive, and two, it, it did not accept my credentials uh, when I'm trying to log in. So here's the issue with it. You cannot set up the NAS under admin rights. You need to set it up under root. So do not log in as admin, log in as root. Doing that and just redoing everything from A to Z solved my issue. Make sure you log in as root whenever you're trying to set up or configure the NAS. All right, so let's see our transfer speeds. Hmm. Only 12 megabytes per second? What? Well, I guess I'm going to have to troubleshoot that to figure out what's going on. I should be getting closer to 100. Well, let the troubleshooting begin, I guess. All right, so let's now test the read speeds. Same file, let's dump it on my desktop. Yes, it's okay. We're getting the same 11 megabytes per second uh, speed, so, hmm. I think the router is, is limiting a lot. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. I need probably to get a new router. And there you guys have it. It is super easy to install and configure this NAS using TrueNAS. Now I had some issues mapping the drive from the server to my PC. And the reason for that was I've set everything up under the admin account when I should have been on the root account. Once I was on the root account and reset everything up, it added just like that. Now I'm having some transfer speed issues. I'm only at 10 megabytes per second. I should be closer to 100. Now I'm thinking that it's my router. I am still using the stock ISP router, so I think that's the probability. I think it can handle the transfer speed. So I'm gonna get a new router and test that out. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notified when I release my next video. If you guys have a question or comment or wanna say hello, What's good? Drop it in the comments below and I will see you guys next time. Peace.